let's turn the problem for arc length around. What I mean by this is, suppose someone gives us the arc length function, how do I recover the original function f of x from that? The problem looks something like this. Suppose we're given, we have the graph of f of x, we're going to go from 1 to x, and then there's a function that's attached to this which gives the arc length, which will be given by 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds. I want to find f of x, given that f of 1 is 0, and that the derivative of f is always positive. Okay, our picture for this, I just draw in the graph of f. I don't know what it is, but I just want to get an idea of what we're doing. I have 1, I have x. There's going to be a segment drawn along the graph of f, and then we just measure that length, and then for each x, we're going to get a different length, and then that'll be the number that comes out of L of x. Okay, our first step, just write down your arc length formula, and then see if we can make something of it. So in this case, L of x would be definite integral from 1 to x of radical 1 plus f prime squared times dt. We're given this as a function, though, as 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds. So what we want to do is we want to isolate this f prime. Once I have f prime, I can get f. But to get to f prime, I need to figure out how to get past this integral sign. How you get past that integral sign is the whole point of the fundamental theorem of calculus, second version. Okay, let's take a look at that. Second fundamental theorem of calculus says, I define big F of x by definite integral from 1 to x of f of t dt. If I want the derivative of big F of x, I just take little f. Wherever I saw t, I'm going to just stick it in an x. And then you're good to go. So what we're trying to do is we want to get rid of that integral sign. So the way we get rid of it is by taking a derivative. So when I take the derivative of L, what will happen? I'm going to throw away the integral sign. Wherever I saw t in this piece, I'm going to put an x. So that's going to give me radical 1 plus f prime of x squared. But we also know that's equal to the derivative of what we're given by assumption. So that's going to be derivative of 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds. That's going to give me x to the 1 half. And now I can start unraveling. I'll have squaring both sides. 1 plus f prime squared equals x. The 1 goes to the other side. And then we can square root. When I square root, I get two solutions, the positive and the negative solution. By assumption, we want only the positive solution. So the negative solution we throw away. So here is my f prime. For our next step, how do I get to f from there? Well, this is the definition of the antiderivative. If somebody hands you a function, what the antiderivative says, I'm giving you the function, say f prime, I'm giving you a derivative. What you have to return is the function that it came from. So to get f of x, I'm just going to take the antiderivative of f prime. So we're looking at an indefinite integral here. This is a substitution. u is going to be equal to x minus 1. So we substitute and follow our nose. When we substitute, we get u to the 1 half du. I add 1 and flip it over. And then I'm going to substitute back in the x minus 1 and then plus a constant. So here's our candidate for the function. Once I get rid of c, we'll have things nailed down. To get rid of c, we note we're also assuming f of 1 is 0. So if I put 1 in here, that's going to give me 0 plus c. But we're assuming that's going to be equal to 0. So c has to be equal to 0. And what I'm left with is f of x equals 2 thirds x minus 1 to the 3 halves. That's our f of x that goes with this length function. Now. We can check this just by going back and recomputing to see if we can recreate this. All we're going to do is go back up the board in reverse order. So let's do that. So 1 plus f prime squared, well, f prime is just going to be bring the 3 halves down, subtract 1. So it's radical x minus 1. We square it, gives me x minus 1. I add 1, that gives me x. So our gadget for arc length is just going to be radical x. We stick it into the formula for arc length. So we're going from 1 to x of t to the 1 half dt. Add 1, flip it over. Evaluate it x and 1. Take their difference. And then what I'm going to be left with is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds. And we see that our check works out. 